The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Andrew Tall. And my name is Lane Davis. Welcome to this month's news selection. We'd like to congratulate Ms. Coffey on her appointment as the principal of Fairgrounds Middle School. Best of luck. We would also like to congratulate Mrs. Talbot on becoming vice principal of FMS. We are lucky to have great leadership. Destination Imagination, or better known as DI. Six teams advance to state competition. Best of luck of our six teams competing this Saturday, April 2nd, at Nashua High School North at the 2016 Destination Imagination New Hampshire State Tournament. A special note and congratulations to the National North team for winning the prestigious Da Vinci Award at the Goffstown Regional Competition. DI judges, judges presented the award to teams possessing a unique approach to a solution for risk-taking and for outstanding creativity. I used to be part of DI. Uh, I went to Global Finals back in 2012, and Global Finals is the, uh, the big competition where if you win states, that's where you go. So hopefully these teams advance to Global Finals. Parents and teachers are invited to attend a free workshop, Zones of Regulation, at Nashua South Lecture Hall on Tuesday, April 5th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. This workshop provides an overview of the general principles of this program, which teaches students who disrupt their learning and social environment because they have dis difficulty regulating their sensory and emotional state. Yearbooks are on sale right now. And the yearbook still needs pictures. We like to make sure that everyone's in the yearbook this year. Send your photos to Mrs. Carey. The wrestling team won the city championship. Sixth grader Anthony Fernandez won the tri-country city and state championships. Luis de Jesus, also sixth grade, won the city championship. Also, another big thank you to Mr. Laurier for all your years of coaching. Enjoy your retirement. The FMS Talent Show will be held May 26th, and yours truly will be hosting. The tryouts for the 6th graders will be May 3rd, 7th uh, graders will be May 4th, and 8th graders will be May 5th, and they'll be held in Mrs. K's room. And we're going to take a quick break and go to the great debate. We'll see you back here in a few minutes. calls me googly eyes. And you know you're beautiful, right? You know that? Even you are beautiful. I got bullied for wearing glasses. Share if you're against bullying. We put it out there, just took off. Three million people have shared this post. Don't let bullies get you down. I stand with you. The <laughs> whole family's wearing glasses. Yay. I wear glasses and I'm proud. I even have the army on my team. All the kind comments brought my child joy. I don't feel thank you is enough. Thanks. I'm Delaney Nelson. And I'm Natalie Ruiz. And we're back with, with the, the Great, great debate. debate. Every day, kids go to school, but do you ever wonder what's taught in classrooms? Well, I'll tell you what's not. Cursive. Yes, this month we're going to be discussing whether cursive should be taught in, school, in schools. And as usual, Natalie and I can't agree. I really don't think cursive should be taught anymore. And I think it should definitely be taught. Really? What makes you so certain about that? Well. One of my many reasons we should still teach cursive is that people are still required to write signatures for many things, like checks, for example, and signatures are traditionally written in cursive. So, what's the big deal? I mean, can't your signature just not be cursive? Well, if you don't believe me, we should hear the reasons about why we shouldn't teach cursive. Okay, well, ever since email was created, it has become an extremely popular form of communication. And almost all of the essays we write in school are typed, right? Basically, we type a whole lot more nowadays than handwrite things. And learning cursive, 
well, we can all agree it may look nice, won't really come in that useful. I see where you're going, but so many people use cursive to write letters, and if you can't write it, you're probably not going to be able to read it that well either. And so many important documents are written in cursive, like the Declaration of Independence, for example, and what a shame if you wouldn't even be able to read it. Well, yes, but while you're more focused on reading things from the past, I'm more concerned about the future. Do you really think that we're going to be using cursive years from now? Probably not. Instead, I could imagine there will be some kind of email update or something with the new iPhone, all of which involve typing, not cursive. Okay, technology will definitely become more advanced. But hear me out. New York Times author Maria Kinovaca states in one of her pieces, some people suffer brain injuries that damage their ability to write and understand print while their ability to comprehend cursive remains. She notes that researchers also have suggested that cursive can serve as a teaching aid for children with le learning impairments like dyslexia. It also helps with motor skills. Wow, I didn't know that. Well, now you do. But honestly, how much good will cursive do us in the long run? Sure, it may help you read a letter or two. And the Declaration of Independence. But we should be more focused on our ever-changing world of technology and try to keep this generation's kids up to date. Well, we'll let you decide before we go into farther with this. Should schools stay away from bringing cursive back into the curriculum? Or should we teach it again? We should. See you next time on The Great Debate. Welcome back. And that was a very great debate. Fairgrounds Middle School is having a spring fundraiser but it doesn't cost you anything. Savers is going to pay FMS for donated items. Start making your piles now. Saturday, April 16th, you can bring your stuff to FMS or Savers on April 16th. Here's what you can donate and what you can't. Soft goods are clothing, shoes, hats, scarves, undergarments, jewelry, accessories, bags, wallets, bedding, towels, curtains, tablecloths, and other cloth materials. Hard goods are Toys, small household goods, and appliances, books, CDs, and DVDs. They do not have to accept lists including all weapons, hazardous materials, construction materials, flammable products, automobile parts, damaged furniture, beds, bedding parts, television, computer monitors, infant car seat, cribs, and other infant products restricted by law. Swing sets, food, pets, large appliances, marine vessels, swimming pools, vehicles, cash, and interchangeable property. They do not accept, the, the do not accept list may be updated from time to time by savers without notice. Contact Mary Beth McCarthy with any questions. And now to our movie critic. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat? One in five children struggles with hunger in America. Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Have you seen the newest Deadpool movie? Well, it's an action-packed movie, and it's just the best. It's featuring, um, it's featuring Ryan Reynolds and Marina Baccarina. So basically, it's uh, Deadpool, which you most most of you have actually heard of, the best superhero in the world, and he's fighting some British guy. Nobody knows his name. I think it's Ajax or something. Um, another movie I saw was My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Bring your girlfriends to it. It's a great chick flick. Don't ask me why. And the last movie that I saw was called London Has Fallen. It is the sequel to Olympus Has Fallen. It's an action-packed movie with a great plot. All of these movies were all great. But this is Dallas Terrio, the movie critic, signing out. And welcome back. I really can't wait to see those films. So our music department is going to be holding their spring concert. Van is going to be holding theirs on Thursday, May 12th at 7 p.m. at Nashua High School South for free. And the choir, which is also free, is going to be Thursday, June 2nd at 7 p.m. at Nashua High School South. Trills and Thrills, which is our 7th and 8th grade music festival, will be Friday, June 3rd for all day. Reminders. Once Upon a Mattress. Nashua South presents Once Upon a Mattress, 
a hilarious musical comedy next weekend at South Auditorium. For tickets, contact Sandy Denner, South Paraeducator. Eighth graders, Can I Be Trope will be coming up in June. This cost will be $31. Awesome time. Come more on that later. Report cards came out on Thursday, March 31st. Good luck to all. Please return your overdue book as soon as possible. Thinking of going to summer camp? Thinking of joining a summer camp this summer? Well, then come over to Fairgrounds. Mrs. G and Mrs. I will be making a movie this year, a continuation of our show from last year as the diner turns. Please see Mrs. G or Mrs. I for more time, for more information. Space is limited. If you're interested in making Fairgrounds better, join the PTO. Come join us for coffee and snacks. Do you have a best friend who's celebrating birth birthday and has to be at school? Cheer them up by paying $1 to have a happy birthday message sent by you over the morning announcements. All proceeds will go to the Santa Fund. If you have anything lying around at home taking up space and you don't know what to do with it, then bring it in and donate it to the FMS Food Pantry. If you have any questions, see Ms. Lapvis in the computer lab. National Junior Honor Society meets every Monday from 3 to 4. Hope to see all members there. In DECA News teams are hard at work for this year's project. The kids had to take an ordinary object like cardboard and turn into something for use for citizens. Mr. J's morning sports are running very strong. Remember to be there at 7 a.m. to participate. Now, we'll be right back after these random history facts. Hello, my name is Natalie Tremblay. And I'm Eve Miller. And this is Random, random history, history Facts. facts. Have you ever wondered why St. Patrick's Day is March 17th? Well, that's because Irish Catholic churches debated on whether St. Patrick's Day birthday was the 8th or the 9th. So they ended up just deciding by, to add the two together to make the 17th. I'm pretty sure you all know that Cleopatra was the queen of Egypt. But what I'm pretty sure you didn't know was that her life was closer to the invention of the iPhone than the building of the Pyramids of Giza. Have you ever wondered why a pirate's flag is called the Jolly Roger? This is actually a mispronunciation. It's supposed to be Ali Raja, which means God of the Seas. People just mess it up at some point. Did you know that once, after a battle in the middle of the war, the Austrian army got drunk and attacked itself, losing 12,000 men in the process? Have you ever wondered why a bad dream is called a nightmare? Well, this is because the part of the word nightmare, mare, means demon who comes at night. Very scary stuff, guys. Don't even know. Have a good day. Did you know that the tomb we previously thought held Alexander the Great was actually the tomb of his best friend? Imagine loving your friend that much. Until next time, I'm Natalie. And I'm Eve. Welcome back. And that was very random. Track and field. Track and field started this March and is now up and running. Good luck to our track and field athletes this season. Drama club dinner dance. Make sure you get your tickets for our annual, for our seventh annual dinner dance. This year is Latin inspired. Come and enjoy music, fun, and food from Hispanic culture. The Jungle Book. Fairgrounds is going on a field trip to Chunky's to see The Jungle Book April 15th. Make sure to go to Miss Carrie for details. Triam. Triam is going to the soup kitchen on April 23rd. Note, this is for Triam members only. We hope to see you there, though. SAD. S-A-D-D. -D. It's, cel it's celebrating National Preservation Week in May. Make sure to wait for more information. Popcorn Friday. Popcorn Friday will be announced, so make sure to listen so you can get a delicious treat for 50 cents. The Women and Men's Choir, which is new to Fairgrounds this year, will be starting rehearsals on April 5th. The women are singing Photograph, and the men are singing Cheerleader. It'll be interesting to see the pop twist to Fairgrounds this year. Our second pep rally is coming up. Get ready to show some team spirit and beat the other teams. From April 15th to May 15th, Portland Pie Company will be doing a fundraiser for FMS. A portion of your check will go toward sports after school events and supplies. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This has been Andrew Tall and Lane Davis signing off.
The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.